Hi, how's it going? This is Resident of Collinwood for YouTube back with a video for you guys and gals. Here with a Halloween video. You know, I have made no secret that I am not a fan of this Halloween trilogy. And there's one big reason that I'm not. It's called inconsistency. The inconsistent writing that has gone on with this trilogy. I am going to pull quotes from Danny McBride. I'm also going to talk about Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills, and yes, Halloween Ends. I'm going to do all three films here and now. It's very simple. When they started Halloween 2018, Danny McBride, the co-writer, out of his own mouth, we're going to stay grounded in reality. Okay, fine. 2018 happens. You have a heel turn by a character named Dr. Sartain. Michael doesn't grab him. Michael doesn't bring his evil out of him. Michael doesn't transfer evil into him. That doesn't happen in that movie. And that's where their problem really begins because... In two films, that's what they're going to say. And no, I don't believe that was their initial call. I think they just win a lot of this shit going forward. Because I don't ever think this... When I say they didn't have a story, I'm not meaning the first film. No, they had a story. They just did not want to end it after one film. They, I don't buy, they had a full-fledged story for three films. And there's nothing you can do to convince me otherwise. I don't buy that. Because you're telling me that this was it, that what they did in ends was their initial plans. Here's the thing. No, it wasn't. We Because we heard there were sins about a radio tower. Nah, there was nothing. We're, there was also, there's pictures floating around now, and there was also news floating around that Allison was going to be the one that Michael possessed. There's a photo out there. I'll go, I'll go find it for this video for the thumbnail to prove my point. So, my overall issue with this is, they did nothing. It, to be clear, it's not the fact that they introduced the character of Corey Cunningham. It's the fact that they did nothing two films ago, being 2018, or Kills, to make mention that Michael could do this. That Michael could awaken someone's evil or transfer his own. Either or. They did not do that. And that's what gets me. They had a character, Dr. Sartain. They could have did that with in 2018. Now, if they did that, if they would have did that in 2018, do you have to then explain that in 2018? No. You don't. Not if you're going to have two more films. You do have to at least make, and you don't really have to explain it in kills. Let me explain what I mean by that. Had they said, and that's the thing, that's all the writers have to do. If, it, if in 2018, Michael would have grabbed Dr. Sartain as Dr. Sartain was checking on him, got up and grabbed him by the throat, and all of a sudden... Michael lets go and collapses. You have Hawkins is like, wait, what just happened? Dr. Sartain, are you alright? Then Sartain pulls out this little knife thing and then starts stabbing the shit out of Hawkins. And you have Allison who's in the car watching this. Then Sartain just collapses next to Michael. His hand falls on Michael. 
the power goes back to Michael or whatever goes back to Michael the evil Michael gets up kills kills Dr. Sartain there's Allison trapped in the car she's got to find a way to get out the car <laughs> let's say she does let's say they would have did just this do they have to explain anything in, in kills not explain necessarily but when you're doing a three film set the middle film you need to at least make mention you need to make mention I'm going to use another franchise I love, Star Wars. The prequels, Attack of the Clones. What do we hear out of Count Dooku's mouth? There is a, there's a Sith. There may be a, you know, again, you have to realize when you're doing a three film set, you need to at least make mention. And how could she have mentioned? How Allison could have mentioned all this? Again, does Allison herself have to understand what just happened? No. Because again, everything in 2018 happened so fast. How do you even begin to comprehend what you saw? So when she's being questioned by the cop about what happened, and by the way, that's something that does happen in Halloween Kills. So in Halloween Kills, when the cops question her, all she would have had to say was, Dr. Sartain acted real strange after Michael grabbed him. It's almost like some sort of evil took over his body. Or just say, when Mark, or just say the first part and leave out the rest. It lets you know something more is going on. Did they do that in 2018 or kills? No. And then there's these people online who say, well, you need to go back and watch the film again. You need to go back and watch the film. Yeah, you need to get your head out of your own ass, okay? I've only watched this film one time. And yes, you deserve that, by the way. I don't have my head so far up Jason Blum's ass. I don't have my lips attached to anyone's ass that made this goddamn trilogy. I'm sorry, you do. And yes, you deserve this as well. Because it's this simple. Had they done anything that I just mentioned, then Corey Cunningham's heel turn and what happened with Corey Cunningham, what would that have done? Oh, it would have made more sense. And no, it's not just Corey Cunningham. If they would have did it with Allison and chose not to do the same things they did, didn't do, guess what? I'd be complaining. Because you did absolutely dick in your first two films to say that was a possibility absolutely dick i don't give a flying fuck what dave mccray pulls out of his fucking ass because he's a liar and you can take that straight to him i don't give a fuck i'm giving you straight facts they did absolutely dick nothing show me where they did what i just said they didn't they did nothing and if anybody wants to pull a lie out of their ass and say they did Shame on you. Shame on you. What, I'm done playing pretend. And that's all the Halloween trilogy fans seem to want to do is play pretend. Like, oh, all you have to do is ignore that the first two films have anything to do with the third. Are you fucking high? Are you? The three films are connected. Lori Strode, Allison, Hawkins are from the first two films. And even if they would have killed Hawkins, that still leaves Lori Strode and her granddaughter. Oh. And the, the woman from part one. Which was in, when she was in Halloween Kills. It's ridiculous. 
It really is ridiculous. And the fact that you can't even admit that this film is bad is sad. It is bad. It's awful. It's dog shit. I don't buy it. I won't own it. And I won't own it for one simple reason. Inconsistent writing. There's no consistency with their writing. It's not who they did it with. It has nothing to do with Corey Cunningham. If they did, would have did this with Allison and not explained it the way, not explained it. If they would have did it with Laura Strode and not, by the way, they tried to. They tried this same, at the end of ends, Michael was trying to transfer his shit to Lori Stroh. Until Lori killed, until Allison came in. It would have still made no sense. And then they tried to sell you, out of Corey Cunningham's own mouth, oh, if you would have just accepted what he was trying to give you that night, and what he's talking about is in 1978. Yeah, Corey, nice try, bro, but you're full of shit, too. People who have common sense aren't going to swallow bullshit. Especially when the storytellers of the three films I just talked about did nothing. Did absolutely dick. To make mention of it, to talk about it, until the third film. You have to connect dots to your movie. To your movie. Not just 1978. You have to connect dots to your film. You know, 2018 and Kills, those movies do exist. They are out there. If you're going to say... That Michael can awaken someone's evil or transfer his own, whatever the hell you were trying to say, you have to display that in 2018 and at least make mention of it in Kills. They don't do either. Fact. Bottom line. You can take that and shove it down your throat or up your ass however you like. Because I'm done being nice. You folks have a nice day. Bye-bye now.